Hi, my name is Dan Bowen from Louisville, Kentucky with the Louisville Space Apps Challenge. We've created an idea for a mobile app that will actually create a crowdsourced Meteor SkyCam network to augment the existing professional and university level Meteor SkyCam network. What we'd like to do is make this design uh, be available to developers to turn into Android and iOS apps that are used by people to take out into dark sky areas at their leisure and use the long exposure mode of Android and iOS hardware cameras to actually take a continuous series of sky photographs in the hopes of catching meteors or satellites passing through the camera's field of view. It would be optional to add a fisheye lens to their camera, but even without the fisheye lens it is feasible to use this idea to capture good data on meteor trails through the sky and satellite streaks across the field of view as well. So our developer Mark has put together a series of mock-up screens that we'll be using today uh, to take a look at this, this app. In general, uh, this app has been designed to be as easy to program as possible and offload the hard computing to human brains and fingertips. By completely skipping image processing and letting the human uh, confirm the alignment of a star field uh, overlaid on top of the photograph, and let the human trace the meteor trail through the, the sky image, uh, we basically uh, allowed a sort of an Amazon Mechanical Turk or a Galaxy Zoo element uh, to do the hard part. And now what you have is a celestial coordinate vector of the meteor streak uh, through the star field. And that data can be stored in the EXIF tag of the photograph itself and then uploaded to a central server where the server can process multiple observers who were simultaneously out in the field and caught the same meteor trail. And it can do the overall calculation uh, with known uh, physics and astronomy calculations to see in 3D space over the planet where that streak was. And when you have that streak's coordinates in the planetary 3D uh, environment, you can then easily compute its orbit back through space uh, from that, which is what traditional all-sky meteor cams do anyway, like the University of Western Ontario's uh, meteor observation program. Uh, whereas they have to spend a lot of money and put uh, permanent cameras in place. Uh, this allows the general public to contribute to this kind of data in a fairly accurate way. Uh, while your finger tracing may not be uh, completely accurate, it's going to at least give you some idea and uh, should excite the public in terms of interacting with uh, meteors and, and space data that they generated or they uh, extracted from data sets. So this app can be split up into, uh, if you like, just people who go out and take photos, uh, people who download photos and analyze them. They line star charts up and trace the trail. And then also uh, the web general public and scientists can then take the data that's produced uh, as the orbital elements out from that, the web server at that point to use. And presumably the photographers and the analyzers uh, would also be interested in seeing what happened to their, their work. And they would get an alert later on to see the predicted orbit of the, uh, the meteor they saw or the satellite they saw go through the sky. So let's take a look uh, at the app and through an example session of observing, analyzing, and seeing results. So here we go. Okay, so here we see a mock-up of the main screen of the app, Falling Star Finder. You can see this uh, is imagined to be a social media stream of any results or images that people captured and posted to Facebook or Twitter from this app previously. And the main function, as you can see here, is highlighted as Capture a Photo. But first, let's take a look at the options uh, you can do to prepare for your photo observation. So you see here we've got a menu uh, where you can check the weather for a site that you plan to go to. You can actually 
sign up with Facebook or other social media to coordinate or send results to friends. You can go see a gallery of images you have taken or downloaded that other people have taken. And you can set up your account information to coordinate location observations and that information. The weather actually allows you to coordinate the clear sky chart for your area to know if it's worth going out into the country to do an observation. Your friends uh, shows what you would expect for a friends list along with a map of your friends locations. And when you sign up for your uh, social media accounts uh, that will take advantage of the location services of other users of this app's posts to coordinate observations that require two simultaneous people observing at once. Now say you want to go and set up a, an observation. You would just tap broadcast location here and it would ask you where you want to go, when you want to go there, and what time of night uh, you want to start your, location, your start your observation and end your observation. And uh, other people that are, uh, have a, a scheduled uh, event ahead of time show up here with their observation range uh, around them. And that range represents uh, the area that they need to have an overlap of someone else's field of view to contribute useful data. If you don't have two people seeing the same streak, uh, the data is not very useful. So the key to this is to try and get people together uh, that want to go out and contribute at the same time. The nice thing about this is that you should be able to coordinate as far as 600 kilometers away uh, for observations as you can see here. Uh, so that uh, does broaden the availability of volunteers. When a person schedules their event, uh, someone else's Facebook feed and the Android OS or the iOS will receive a push notification if the user, if other users are within this area, asking them if they want to go out and contribute an observation at the same time uh, to encourage uh, coordination as easy as possible. So uh, once you get out into the field, you will see a, a view like this and it will uh, have the option to be shown in uh, night mode. And this gives you the, uh, all the settings that you'll need to set up your, your capture session. Now, you'll see there's uh, important information about your quality of location and your compass, because you'll need to tag the photo with the attitude, location, and uh, the compass information to get a, the most out of this. You see here the timer will set how long you want to take photos for. Say you want to be out there for two and a half hours, you have to say two and a half hours. ISO, you can adjust the speed uh, of that to get actual good photography results. And the shutter, uh, we expect to have anywhere from five to 30 second long exposures for each one. And this will tell you uh, in the next screen uh, exactly uh, where you want to put it. You can tell where you want to put it, uh, the resolution, the quality of the image and the physical stability threshold so that uh, if you're moving the table this is sitting on when it's ready to shoot a picture it will tell you audibly to stop moving the table. The, uh, once you've set all this it will tell you how much space it requires if there's not enough space on the device for your desired time length and battery uh, will also give you a warning if there's not enough expected battery life. So. Once you're back inside, you go into editor mode and you will get a, a line on your screen that you can drag around with your fingers and resize, twist, and you want to basically uh, shrink it down to cover the streak from end to end. And you can see here it's much longer than the streak we saw previously. We would squeeze it down here. And then you can actually use these Bezier curve handles here to turn and twist the line as a Bezier curve in case there is distortion or it has a curve from your point of view. You'll then switch to star align mode, uh, which will put a, uh, the estimated star field for the phone's uh, tagged location and time overlaid on this digitally, 
and you will twist and, and move that star field of dots to line perfectly up with the, the stars you see in this image, which then gives you the, the coordinates of the vector in relation to the stars themselves, which is the information you need to process the 3D location. It does have undo, redo features, save uh, function, of course, when you're done with your work. And then you'll have a gallery of photos uh, that you have taken and possibly edited as well. You can then uh, do selections. Uh, you can download other photos that uh, if someone has taken them and didn't want to edit them themselves, to add vectors themselves. And also uh, we'll have the ability to remove duplicates of uninteresting photos that don't have streaks through them automatically. And uh, when you go into one of your galleries from an observing date, you'll see all the photos you took, the dates. Uh, you can actually get the, the EXIF tag, uh, the geolocation data, uh, and the editing information there as well. And from, uh, let's see, there when you select one, uh, you can edit the edit icon, select multiple ones to be uploaded, and uh, then the action from the user side is pretty much done. At that point, uh, it goes to the server on the web. Here we see the end result of the web upload, where the two users have contributed their data, uh, and they're credited here as uh, this user and that second user have uh, contributed their uh, separate photos. And the end result has computed this orbit, uh, showing the meteor that uh, was formerly an asteroid going through the solar system on an or Earth impact orbit. And below for the real science value is the actual computed data of the orbit itself. And uh, this will be available and the users will receive an alert when this has been computed uh, and the result is available.